Hi everyone, Elite here with another video in my daily sketching in my sketchbook series. As I was saying yesterday, I really don't know how regular these videos will become, uh, sadly. And yeah, it's been really great fun doing them and I'll definitely continue to do this, but I don't know at what pace. I want to say thank you so much for joining me on the series, and I love reading your comments. I'm so happy that so many of you are enjoying the series and feel inspired to play and try different things. So I think it's been a success overall. And yeah, I hope I can finish this sketchbook and then, you know, do a flip through and everything. But I still have probably about um, somewhere between 15 and 20 pages to go. So still a long way to go. Uh, again, I'm starting here the same way I started. I feel like all my green pages with trying to find a good complementary color. And this, I think, is just a really great tip if you are not sure which colors to include. Now, obviously, um, going with complementary colors is just one out of many, many possible uh, color schemes you can try. And I really recommend the Stephen Quiller book. It's one of my favorite books about color theory. I go back to it again and again. Um, so I highly recommend that. It's like full of great information, but it's not too heavy to read. So it's always one of my um, like best recommendations for uh, color theory. And uh, he paints a lot with watercolors, at least in that book. So, or I think it's almost completely dedicated to watercolor. I can't remember right now, but yeah, great, great resource. So what I like about going with a complementary color scheme, which I've talked about in the past, is just you get a really huge variety of mixes. You get the original colors and then you get... Uh, slightly desaturated versions of them and then you go into the semi-neutrals and then you go into the neutrals. So it's really, really interesting to just explore the different mixes you can get from complementary colors. And if you choose interesting colors or granulating colors, then it's really um, just fun and the effects are beautiful. So I highly recommend trying that. Now, today's color is Azo Green Yellow. I have a pen of it by Van Gogh. I think, I don't know if I bought it separately or it came in one of the sets. Um, you can see it's a very, very intense color. It's kind of ticks that box of um, green gold for me, which has been a favorite uh, a long time. Um, I don't know, this particular one, I think it's just a tad bit too intense for me. I think I would prefer something just a bit more earthy. That's not a problem because, you know, you can always tweak it and you can always tone it down with a different color, a dark color, or like a pink would neutralize it a bit, so, or red. So you do get uh, a lot of options if you include such a color, but I don't know if I will keep that one um, for autumn. I think I might switch it for the olive green that I recently bought from Daniel Smith. I think that's a little bit more interesting color. However, this one is a single pigment color. Um, so if that is important to you, I think it's lovely. You can see it's very, very bright, very intense. Um, it, it's a lovely color. I just, you know, I've just, I'm very fickle with my color <laughs> infatuations. <laughs> And so I think I will try something different. I'm definitely keeping undersea green and cascade green in my palette because I really love those. Uh, but this one I might uh, switch out. So you can see that kind of the other colors took over. I went back to the composition of my lavenders, uh, which I explored in a different page. You can find that in this series as well. Uh, as I was going through my violet and purple colors. Uh, I don't know, I just felt like I wanted to try that. Uh, I think the these 
couple last pages or this one and then you'll see the the few next ones i got a little bit lost i would say i just i don't know i wasn't feeling it so much so this is a good opportunity to see how colors flow and just play around with it uh, i did enjoy it but i don't know it's just you know sometimes you just lack that focus of really paying attention to everything that you're doing and that kind of focus usually leads to better results in my case at least and then when i just start like piling on the colors without thinking too much um yeah usually it ends up a little bit of a mess so there's a time and place for everything and i do think it's better to sit down and paint even if you're not very focused or concentra concentrated than not paint at all but yeah the results will reflect that in my case at least i'm showing you the beautiful uh, sparkle from this color i can't remember which one it was it might have been the rose gold by sandra she's here on youtube or it could have been that copper candle from rachel beth they are quite similar i think i may swatch them next to each other at some point in the video the copper color from rachel beth is just more coppery <laughs> than the rose gold it has uh, more of that you know rosy um tint to it they're both really really beautiful they are kind of similar but if you're a little bit uh, particular about you know these kind of shades which i am um with certain colors i don't have strong preferences but with those kind of coppery rose yellow rose gold colors i am particular uh, but these are both so so beautiful so yeah if i had to choose one i don't know which one i choose i think maybe the the formula of both of them is beautiful um but i think maybe the sandra one the rose gold just has uh, the color is just a little bit more uh, what i like so yeah the the thing again with these kind of um i don't know loose compositions you really need to come back with another layer if you just go with one layer then you just end up with blobs and you need to go back in and add some sort of detail it can be very loose it can be very kind of conceptual but you do need that to just to make a painting interesting and sometimes for me i just i lose interest after that first layer and so I have tried to find other ways to work. I go into great detail um, in my intuitive watercolor class. But yeah, this was kind of a style that I tried for a long, long time and had, I don't know, partial success with it, let's say, if I managed to not lose interest after that first <laughs> wash okay so piling on the shimmer and the glitter this one is i don't know is this that yeah this is that mystery glittery gold color that <laughs> is <laughs> torturing me i really don't know i need a detective to uh, figure this one out the pan is the same pan like i have from the rachel beth colors but she labels all her colors so i really don't know how this came to be i don't know it's a mystery anyway it's just this beautiful glittery gold color and i can't tell you which one it is but uh many companies uh make gold paints and most of them are good so if you want that it's not a problem to find and then also there's a product by schminke oh i'm just showing you yeah here is what i was talking about i'm showing you that the bottom one is the zandra uh, rose gold and then the top one is the coppery uh, copper candle from rachel beth so just so you can see the differences as well it's fun also to play with um kind of different tones of a color uh, i think it adds something it adds interest and i was also interested with how these i was interested in how the these colors were reacting with my beloved dusk pink which is a color as far as i've seen it's kind of a unique color to the 
um, Royal Talents range. So they have a version of it in their Rembrandt range and a version of it in their Van Gogh range uh, with different pigments. Uh, both have that granulating black. I think that one is the same, but uh, then they add a different pink pigment. And I love that color. You don't need to buy the Van Gogh or Rembrandt one, although I think they're fantastic. And I know some of you purchased them and love them also. So that makes me happy. But you can absolutely mix something like a granulating black, which most brands offer with kind of your favorite pink. So something like quinacridone rose or something like that. You will get a similar result. So it just looked to me like it reacted uh, in an interesting way with the gold and those metallic colors. So I just wanted to explore that a little bit. Here you can see how that dusk pink looks. It's just a lovely color. I love using it as a dark in my paintings. Most of the time I have usually pink also in my painting. So it kind of... Uh, makes sense to use it as a dark um, but yeah I love that color and that was it just playtime nothing really to say about this it's not my favorite page but I did have fun and yeah those shiny splatters are very very addictive <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video and we're starting with the neutrals now and I tell you it's a challenge. I'll see you in another video soon. Bye!